Well, I think this probably, based on Dave's definition, just about qualifies as a lightning talk. So um, it's quite high level. Um, and as I was writing it, um, product engineers greater than software engineers. I know it's quite a big statement, um, but when I was writing it, it sort of reminded me of the, the passion that I felt for what software engineers have to go through on a daily basis. Um, so with that, I took the opportunity to rename it slightly. Um, software engineers are sort of on their way to product, product engineers already. And it's down to a sort of never ending evolution. My name's Ellis. I'm currently the CTO and co-founder at Novel App. Um, beforehand, I was the lead technical architect at The Economist. Um, my background is in all things AWS, um, Golang, Node, and a bit of React and TypeScript as well. Um, I was previously AWS, AWS solutions architect and developer. However, that's expired, and apparently they don't care that much about in interviews about it anyway. Um, so I never got it renewed. Um, so one question that I have been trying to answer over the last, at least the last year, is how fast the industry is actually moving. And the, one of the reasons I started asking myself this is because for, throughout the years of my professional career, um, people have always asked me, well, what do you do? And I'm sure some of you guys have had the same question, what do you do? And uh, I said, oh, I work in software. And the response more often than not is the same. That industry moves very quickly, doesn't it? And um, to sort of preserve their opinion and understand, I say it moves very quickly. But it's taken me about 15 years to get a base understanding, professional understanding of JavaScript, Golang, and AWS. From a macro point of view, one of the things I've been trying to understand is where the market in terms of software engineering is actually heading. For the last 25 years or so, it's grown and grown and grown. In fact, 2023 was the first year that it didn't actually grow as a labor market. Um, there's a, looks like there's a bit of a bounce back this year, but that is about half of what we've seen in previous years. So the aim for this session really over the next 15 minutes is to try to make some sense of what we've seen over the last 30 years and whether that's changed in the last 24 months. And there's specific reasons for that. Um, we won't go into the underlying data and research that I've done for it now, but if anybody's interested after, um, I've got quite a bit. So hands up any web developers, software engineers in most, not unexpected. Project managers, very good. Product owners. Any recruiters? <laughs> okay, good. That's good. I hope not. Um, everybody who's happy in their job and doesn't want to leave. Okay, good. Uh, people who are not so happy in their job and looking for something new, officially. Okay. Okay. And people who, are, if you've come with colleagues from your current job, don't put your hand up. But people who are secretly looking for a new job. <laughs> Very good. It's a shame there's no recruiters. Um, so before we can go forward and try and assess what's going to happen over the next five or ten years in the market, um, it's worth looking quickly at history, at the, uh, briefly at history. And the history doesn't always reflect what's going to happen next, but it can give us a bit of an idea. And the way we're going to do that is with a bit of a timeline. So on the top half, we can see the engineering skill change as different inventions and innovation arrived in the world. Um, and what it took for a software engineer to overcome that, um, that innovation. Um, so you can see World Wide Web, obviously software engineers um, had to start to grips, get to grips with HTML, whatever beast that was at the time. Um, we've got things like Netscape, Java, so a lot of engineers had to sp specialize in actually learning Java and back-end and back -end engineering became more important. Um, on the bottom half, we've got incoming roles, and by that I mean incoming flavours of roles. Um, 
roles that have been transformed by certain innovations and roles that fell out of favour as a result. And this is just three of maybe 100 in a decade. And that's true for the 2000s as well. Um, so 2001, the Agile Manifesto was released. All of a sudden, software engineers had to go from working in long waterfall style, style of, en of engineering to much shorter rounds of trips. Um, they, had to, they had to sort of go back and forward between customer, go back to UAT, engineering. The process became much quicker. In 2006, Amazon released AWS. Um, and there's a number of concepts that weren't previously available to software engineers um, that were classically in the sort of network engineering domain or the sysadmin domains, things like scalability, load balancing, and distributed systems. But through the power of infrastructure as code, um, software engineers were exposed to that. In 2007, Apple released their first iPhone, and um, some engineers diversified into native engineering, whether that was Objective-C, Swift, um, and for those who didn't, um, they had to learn this thing called responsive design. Early, early 2010s, um, Microsoft released Azure and um, the cloud computing boom sort of ignited. Um, all of a sudden, there was a whole host of different services that software engineers had to get to grips with, even just in the AWS domain, things like the concepts of microservices, um, Terraform, CloudFormation, and Lambda, all different ways of applying the same, the same sort of code, but different techniques. Um, the containerization revolution, the release of Docker and Kubernetes, different ways for deployment. Um, in 2000, around 2016, talking about machine learning was very popular. Um, data scientists and machine learning engineers became very popular. Have we got any of them? <coughs> No, okay, trying to gauge where they all sort of went. Um, and um, in around 2018, um, although it didn't have a big impact on the skills of traditional software engineers, we sort of started to see the rise of no code and no code engineers. Um, so it didn't impa impact us on a skill set basis. However, it did have some underlying effects in the industry. So what do we know? Software industries evolved with increased accessibility due to the abstraction of technology. Sounds reasonable. Secondly, every innovation expanded the pool of who could work in tech. Um, for example, mobile developers um, in the 2000s to what we now know as no-code creators. Let's call them creators, not engineers. Um, but no code creators, um, merging and consolidating of roles. Thirdly, where accessibility to developing technology increased coexisting roles were consolidated and merged. And finally, the shape of industry and the shape of the industry and in demand roles have been in continuous change. And it's more than likely that they will be um, over the next 10 years. So Slight segue, but recently Sam, Sam Altman, um, the Chief Executive Officer at OpenAI, talked about five different steps of, to AGI. Uh, conversational, reasoners, autonomous, innovators, and organization. We won't go through all of them. Is everyone familiar what, with what, what they actually are? What is AGI? That's um, artificial general intelligence. Um, so we're only going to cover the first three um, because that's all I think we can get anywhere near to trying to predict. Um, we're at step one. So I think who on a daily basis uses things like GitHub Copilot, Cursor, um, GPT? Some, it's okay, it's fine. Um, so. So quite a few of us have felt it, and in terms of how AI, the step one of AI, has actually changed our job already. Um, next year, 
Um, maybe we won't see step two, but we might see a sort of step 1.5. And at that point, um, we see, sort of see an enhancement of what we've seen over the, over the last three years. And then based on Sam Altman's predictions of thousands of days, um, by 2028, we might see um, a sort of um, step two. And that's where AI properly assists in how we design our applications. And maybe, or maybe not, it's quite, I'd, I'd say it's quite far out at the moment, um, we might see a step three. And then the software engineers sort of migrate into a position where um, they actually become sort of more system architects and they're working with AI agents to sort of augment different applications, but they're not actually writing the code for the applications themselves. Where they're actually augmenting the AI to go and do that. Um, picture um, the provisioning of uh, a relational database, for example. At the moment, you set up, you go through all of the schema, you go through the different access patterns. Um, in some, pla some platforms already claim to be able to do this sort of thing where they can automate the provisioning of it. But by sort of step three onwards, you would be working directly with another sort of entity to do that for you. And it all leads us here. We all know about ab what abstraction actually means from a software point of view, but I suppose there's this com concept of hyper abstraction. When you roll, roll together things like no code and AI um, platforms, they reshape software. They, they look like they're gonna reshape software development again and again, even in the next five years. Um, the barrier between idea and implementation is disappearing slowly. So what could change? A single engineer may be responsible for more things, things like pro product and stakeholder management, design and other roles may begin to emerge as part of the engineering role. And why should we care? Well, longevity. Engineering becomes about a combination of different things. Code, yes. System architecture and design, more of that. Soft skills, things like just communication and leadership. Engineering becomes more holistic as a role. So the main takeaway is the industry over the last 24 months, I believe, is, is now on rocket boosters. Whether it's no code, AI or something else, the engineering landscape is changing rapidly. So how does the conversion take place? Because AI and no-code tools may begin to automate routine coding, developers will be able to do their thing more quickly, possibly freeing them up to take on other roles. Where is it happening? Well, the shift is happening, I would say, in startups and SMEs now. Um, large companies of maybe a thousand or more who can naturally react less quickly it might take a little bit longer. When it's happening is now. It started to happen over the last, 20, uh, over the last 24 months, maybe three years, um, but it's, it's not gonna slow down. If anything, it will, it will speed up. Um, there'll be lower barriers to innovation, AI and no-code tools democratize software creation, enabling faster iterations and specialized and reducing reliance on specialized engineering teams. So how can we prepare for the future? Regularly engage with emerging technologies like AI and no code platforms. Explore how they complement your skills to remain indispensable in a shift in landscape. Um, develop soft skills alongside technical skills. Develop complementary skills such as communication, leadership, and user-focused problem solving to seamlessly move into hybrid roles. Align skills with market direction and prioritize strategic learning. Identify where the industry is heading, whether in AI integration, product ownership, or advanced system design, and invest in mastering those areas. Be adaptable. 
view change as an oppor opportunity because there's going to be a lot of change over the next five to ten years. And maybe most importantly of all, remain open to evolution. Software engineering is evolving, but the demand for creative and adaptive problem solvers has not gone away. Stay curious and be willing to sway with the industry. The industry is moving at light speed, but by understanding its trajectory, we can not only keep up, but as software engineers, we can lead the way. The future of engineering belongs to those who prepare for it today. So take proactive steps toward professional development in technical and software and soft skills. For anyone who's interested in hearing more about product engineering, there's now a product engineering manifesto. So if you are interested, scan this QR code. You can start the repository and have a read. It's on a PDF. So um, yeah, that's, that's it.